All right, Chelsea fans, welcome back to another episode of the London Is Blue podcast. This is your host, Brandon, my host, Nick, and Dan. In general, we've got the Everton match review. That is right. Another Sunday in the book, Dan. Not the way we drew it up. Uh, I don't know what you and Sam need to do in your previews, but <laughs> we got we to gotta change something. It's We're not blind. Working. We're blaming Sam and Dan for, for the, saying, for we the gotta, preview pods. We just got to try something different. Uh, maybe we have to do a Nick and Sam pod or something. Well, it's, it's sub me out and try to keep Sam in there because that's that's where all the power comes from in that type of conversation. So we'll, we'll try some rotation here, some healthy rotation, Nick, to see if we can do our own thing because, you know, we don't want to be accused of not trying to fix the problem at Chelsea because, boy, oh, boy, there are tons of problems that we're going get to gonna get into in this episode. And it seems like it's all finger pointing and semi excuses. And, and look, we want to do our part. Dan, I have even stopped wearing Chelsea shirts during Chelsea games because the last four times that I've done that, we've lost. So I wore this here green T-shirt today. That didn't help either. So I'm I'm running out of options, man. I I don't know where else to go. What other cleansing we need to do? To- Here's your issue: green is a combination. Of yellow and blue, <laughs> you weren't far enough away from blue. That was the problem there, Nick. You had to go further away from it. I know. I tried wearing gray on Wednesday, thinking, man, maybe gray's new. No, obviously not. That was a catastrophe. So, well, look, uh, we're going to do a little bit different this time. We we said that the last episode too, and now we've had to continue to do something different because no one wants a. Uh, one through 90 minute match review. So this is going to be more of a reaction cast. Uh, we're going to look at Potts' comments along with how the match reports have trickled out. Uh, we're going to see if Chelsea really look in the mirror or not. So uh, we're going to jump into it here as we always do with the three word match review. Uh, Danimal, take us through the ire, the feelings, and the emotions. TK Lot with Soft as Charmin. Uh, just in case you're not in a part of the world where Charmin is sold, it is a uh, toilet paper. And it is uh, usually very plush as long as you're getting the two-ply situation there. Miles G with the tanking for draft. Shane with only seeing systems. Millhouse with a little bit. Symptoms, yes. The Millhouse with the zero funds, sir. Little call to remember <laughs> the Titans. Fantastic. Robert Hansen with the Ramsey. Shut it down action going on there as well chris with diced and diced something like that tosh with big sam time question mark sakeshi with project they said winning it'll be they fun said. they said <laughs> <laughs> and then mango gambino the third phd with training highlight fc the training highlight videos might be the best part of chelsea's week y- yeah look i love what the media team does i think they put out great little video clips throughout the week and then we play the games right and even the the media team can't save what we have like they i saw they put out the the highlights nick and i was like nope like mm-hmm. even as good as you guys are creatively and artistically nope i'm sure not so <laughs> I've, anyways I've, se- I've seen what i need to see i'm i'm good uh what about you and uh and your three word match review not goodison enough oh boy so now that the writer strike is over, have you hired a writer or is this AI? No, it's really called just having a tremendous amount of talent. Um, but, you know, it's in, in moments of strife, you really call upon your, your own talent. And I've been doing pretty well lately, if I don't say so myself. Interesting. Dan? Well, I think here's one that the ownership group might understand. Clear, Light, Clear Lake's depreciating asset. That's what it feels like Chelsea is right now on the bounce books, because if the goal is Champions League football, if the goal is to generate more commercial revenue, that is going to be very difficult with a mid-table side with no European football two seasons in a row. I put no dog fighting. Uh, Definitely felt like a lack of tenacity and effort from this group. They were happy to let Everton take it to them especially in the crucial parts of the match so uh a lot more here but we always want to say thank you to everybody in our amazing community dan don't we they do so much and we've got some really easy ways for them to help us out 
Yeah, five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, as well as sharing those wonderful Spotify raps when you get them. They're, they're really nice. They warm the heart, unlike the Chelsea performance. But look, you also can subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified on YouTube. You can sign up for a free newsletter that we drop weekly written by Sam, known as CFC Central, the London is Blue Dispatch. And hey, if you want to join in on the conversation and maybe t- sometimes talk about things that aren't related to Chelsea with some fellow Blues, get into our Discord community as well. It's a great way to support the pod from a little bit of a cash contribution too which is always appreciated not always needed all right well i think it's time to dive into this one just to set the stage it was everton this past sunday the 10th of december in the premier league at goodison park uh, in case you missed the scoreline, Everton 2, chelsea nil goals coming in the 54th minute from abdullahi dukure and then 90 plus two uh came from lewis dobbin Hadn't seen a number 61 score in a while, uh, so that was always frustrating when I looked up and realized one of their youngsters or low-minutes players smashed one in at the end. Uh, Dan, just line up for context here as we as we plug through this. Yeah, it was Robert Sanchez between the sticks with Reese James, Axel Di Sassi, Benoit Badeshiel, and Mark Kukurea as the back four that started, not the way that it ended. Moises Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez along with Connor Gallagher returning to the lineup after a forced suspension with Cole Palmer, Mikhailo Mudrik, and Armando Broya as your attack. And we did find that Raheem Sterling and Nico Jackson, who both made appearances in the 66th and 67th minute, were being rested for rotation reasons. Then you did see Levi Colwell come in in the 27th minute for Reese James out injured. You saw Ian Matson and Petrovic getting his Chelsea debut as Robert Sanchez went down injured with a bit of a knee issue. You saw Gilchrist, Silva, Cassadine, and Alex Matos as unused subs in this match. All right, some of the top line stats. See if I can get through this. Uh, I believe, let me see, Dan. Are we on the right? We are on the right, yes. So 0.93 XG to Everton's 1.08. We had 72% of possession away from home. We had 16 shots, four on target to their nine shots with five on target. Um, We had 12 fouls apiece, two yellow cards apiece, 11 free kicks apiece. That's hilariously uh, even on that sense. We had no big chances. Bright side of that, you can't miss any. They had two and missed the one. Uh, from there, we had a negative 0.46 goals prevented to their 0.82. And if there's one goalkeeper that drives me absolutely insane, it is Jordan Pickford. Honestly, confuses <laughs> the life out of me, frustrates the life out of me. Uh, the one random stat, though, that you did pull, Dan, was at Opta Analyst. Chelsea won 39 points from 39 Premier League matches in 2023 so far. No ever present Premier League side have won fewer in this appear in this period, excluding deductions, aka Everton, who we just lost to. Uh, Thirty nine was Chelsea, Crystal Palace, and Nottingham Forest. Not the type of company we want to spend our time with. So Nick, stats, the one random stat, what stands out? Yeah, we we were talking before the pod. If you would have told twenty. 20- 1617 London is blue podcast that at some point in the future uh, in a calendar year, which of course is skewed from a numbers perspective in all sorts of ways. But if, if you would say that we would average one point per game at some point, you would think that we would have been relegated and the, our league form has dropped for years precipitously, but this has been unfucking believable with how bad it's been. So we've got to turn it around, turn it around quick. Otherwise, uh, you know, we're going to have a not fun uh, end of the season. Another not fun. Yep. Sure. Another one. Yep. End of the season. Uh, Usually, I think, Dan, the consensus is Chelsea can turn a ship around after a season, right? You think of like what Tuchel came in and did. Um, Obviously, it went flat last year. So, like, great. Let's hit reset. We should be good this year. A two year drag is not something most Chelsea fans are aware is a possibility. Well, it's not that it's we're unaware that it's a possibility. It's that we're not accustomed to how to respond in that moment and not accustomed to seeing the club struggle at trying to rebounce or reclaim their footing. And, and that is what's causing, at least from my view, 
watching the conversation unfold both online and with people who go to the games both away and home, that is in the larger challenge is that it is dealing with the the lack of the plan, Nick, and understanding how we are going to get out from this situation. Because as we'll talk about with what Pochettino said, it's not one thing. It is a lot of things. And I think the thing is, some of those problems may be quick to fix and some may not be. I mean, this game in particular, I know we're going to go into some of the commentary after this, but we knew exactly what was going to happen. I mean, you know, I talked to Naz almost a month ago. He said he could write that Chelsea play bad at Goodison match report then, and he was absolutely correct. We knew that uh, Everton was going to shit house. We knew they were going to be physical. We knew they were going to hit on a long ball over the top. They did everything that we expected and out efforted us along the way. And that's the reason they won. And they were deserved winners. Um, you know, I would have thought leaving the match on Wednesday, Brandon, where we were so poor and, and we're just so out of our depth that this game, we would have been shot out of a cannon that we would have been competitive at every level. Some players stepped up, but the team did not, and I, I don't know what to do about that as we analyze this. I know we're going to get into the commentary, but it, I, w- I just expected something wholly different, and it, it didn't come. Yeah, you're not alone on that one. So we're going to take our first ad break. When we get back, jumping right into reacting to Potch's comments and see how he thought the game went. So think with sponsors, and we'll be right back. What is going on, Chelsea fans? Exciting announcement. Uh, we have joined up with Team Manscaped again for this holiday season. That's right, we are back with Manscaped. I know how much you love their ads before, so we are going to partner up with them again this holiday season. If you're looking for a gift to upgrade your daily care routine, right? check out the brand new Lawnmower 5.0. Ultra. That's right. We got the the new one here. So as you are used to uh, with these trimmers, it is skin safe technology. We got the dual head system, waterproof. You can use it in the shower, uh, USB-C, quick charge option, dual temp LED spotlight, and it's got a travel lock. So the kit that we are recommending you get is the 5.0 Ultra comes with the razor itself it comes with two of the combs and then it also comes with the foil blade. You've got all th- options here that comes with it. Now check this thing out. It is built great, nice and sturdy, good weight to it. You can hear you got some good RPMs in there. Check out the light for those of you on YouTube. That's right. You got two different uh, brightnesses on there that you have. Uh, the other reason we love Manscaped is it, uh, They are part of the Testicular Cancer Society, right? They save balls. They're all about helping men uh, with their daily grooming routines as well as what they're going through life. So we appreciate them and everything they do. Check it out. Again, Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Link in the description. Check it out. Link in the description. Let them know that you came to them through London is Blue so that they can continue a partnership with us. Check them out. Well, enough about what you think. Let's just go right to Potch and see what he thought about this because obviously, I think there might be some disagreement. He said, I think the game started very well. I mean, sure. How long do you think, though, this time frame is, Dan? Five minutes? Ten minutes? Well, I guess defining... How did we start the game well? I I don't necessarily, again, I think there's a lot of disagreement. Just looking at his first half stats, so you talked about the the, total game stats. Neither side, I mean, the combined XG at the end of the first half was 0.3. We had 71% of the ball. We had five shots. We only had one on target. Three were more off target. One was blocked. I mean, it was was not good. Like, I, I actually don't think either team trying to take credit for the first half is a great idea because the football was really poor. It was terrible. So yeah, I, I don't think that is great. And then I think he followed it up talking about, which I think is more of a, a comment I would agree with Nick that he said, we just weren't clinical in front of the goal, which is has been the problem. And I think when you had, and I think maybe this was where my concern was looking at the lineup was you had no Sterling and no Jackson. And I know people have go hot and cold on them, but they represent, they represent 55% of the goals at Chelsea, non-penalty goals that Chelsea have scored in the Premier League this season, leaving one out 
I can understand leaving two out seems like a really bad idea given the fact you're Mudrick with two goals is the one that you'd be counting on to try to increase the volume. And while he had good spells in the game, it wasn't necessarily as impactful as he needed to be. And again, this is not on one player on Mudrick, right? But this is more just like holistically, like he was not going to be the one to carry independently this team forward across the line. No, I mean, yeah, I, I was very surprised by the lineup. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of time for Armando Broya. Obviously, I, I'm excited to see him kind of continue his, uh, as the club says, continue his rehabilitation journey <laughs> by playing matches. Uh, I understand why he was selected, I guess, just, you know, height, physicality, over the top, hold up play, all that sort of stuff. And Jackson was terrible against United. So I, I guess I understand the reaction there after seeing both of them play in this game, Potch got it wrong. Uh, I think Jackson looked a lot more dangerous when he came on. Uh, I thought that he got into better areas at the end. Um, Sterling and Mudrick are just two completely different profiles of player. And you're basically leaving the entire weight of offensive production to Cole Palmer <laughs> in this setup and, and it didn't go well, you know, Enzo's not a goal scorer, uh, unfortunately. And so even him playing in that advanced role, Brandon, you, you saw some positive passing movements. You saw the ball turn over a little bit quicker than it did against United, but this was not like a sterling performance, no pun intended on at, for the first half. So uh, his last two press conferences have irked me. This one irked me because it was, simply just not true. Like we did not start the game very well. If, if his definition of very well is that we were able to kind of pass the ball a little bit, then we have a long fucking way to go. Uh, look, the clinicality in front of goal, like I hate to say it, but like, duh, obviously, yeah. um, no shit. <laughs> but it's also like, we've started to score goals, Dan, you and Sam talked about this in the preview, but now we've been bleeding goals, right? So we're not clinical in front of the goal. Um, Broya versus Jackson, I think it was a game of two halves. I think Jackson needed to be put back. He, remember, he had a lot of, like, not a pretty week off the field with, like, comments and things and and obviously a lot on fire in social media. But, like, if Jackson was going to do it week in, week out, like, he does need to be reminded that he's not the only striker there. And I do think that he reacted well when he did come on. The after-match nonsense, I'm over it right like jackson wants to start a fight after the match i could care less um i just think like you've already you had your chance to get involved and you didn't do it on during the match like you're not going to do it after the match fight during the match <laughs> that's what i'm like, saying like come on you man. had your chance no one cares what you start after the game you, you don't look you had tough 30 like, minutes to do it no oh, it's, it's so lame man it, it's just as lame as the as the lame Instagram posts going. We'll fight next time. Yeah, I'm I'm bored of it. <laughs> oh, okay, take it. We're taking it on the chin, but we're gonna come back renewed. Like I don't give me a break. No one has. <laughs> no one has come back. Um, uh, Podge said we created and had the chances in concrete. Uh, AK, we think False. he's saying, hey, we had concrete chances. Correct. Um, Cole Palmer was the only one who was shooting, almost to a fault, where he was literally the only one shooting, but. You know, two shots, two shots account for 0.3 of that XG, and it was Nico and Enzo with their two shots, and, that, and they were 0.15 each. Like there was no high quality shot taken from a Chelsea player in this match. Like, and and that was again goes back to the did we get a lineup correct? I don't think so. Even if you're trying to rest players, because you just didn't have the players who have been proving this season that they are scoring the goals in the Premier League rotated appropriately in this match. Well, and, that, and you knew what they were going to do, Brandon. You knew they were going to just condense their defense as much as humanly possible. They weren't going to let Broya or Mudrick or Palmer get clean shots off. Like that is their, that is dice ball to a fucking T. And you have Abdullah Decore running around like a madman trying to cut out Enzo's production, trying to cut out Connor Gallagher's production and he was doing the job of two people and and was successful. <laughs> you know, like, you, we know exactly how they're going to play. We've seen Dice Ball at Burnley for, what, like five, six years? And then now two years at Everton or a year and a half at Everton? Like, this is very obvious. Like, it, it, as far as, like, tactics in the Premier League go, 
they have an identity. It's a shit identity, but you know exactly what you're going to get with them. And and we, it was like we didn't know what we were in for today. Potch also said, Dan, that we control the team that's very hard to control and very difficult to play against. Um, no. <laughs> uh, control, I guess, maybe in what sense. As you see, we had the majority of the possession. We outshot them, you know, by seven, almost doubled their shots. The control, I think, is in very non-dangerous places. And it, what it feels very sorry esque in the like we you had the all the opportunity and all the time to do what you wanted with it, but you couldn't get deep enough into the opposition box to and in, in locations in the opposition box of high value to actually do anything. Like you got Mudrick, who was having a lot of fun against Ashley Young for a period of time, but where was a cross to anyone? Where was the height of anyone to be able to? to take that down. I mean, Broya is not a player with great aerial dominance despite his height. And so like that is like a yeah, no good delivery, no good height in the box. Like it just, yeah, it was all control, but no end product. So post-match Naz tweeted this Dice after Potch saying Chelsea were the better team quote. They were better in some ways, like in keeping possession, but you've got to find ways of winning. We are finding ways of winning. We fight, Work and do the ugly side of the game. Nick, over to you. What which which coach do you want to play for? After those quotes. I do do I love watching Everton play? No. I, I think it's plotting and and bad and 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 very kind of stone age football. But I think all of us, after after the period that we've had here want to see a team that finds ways to win ugly, that finds ways to fight, that is physical without being stupid about their physicality. Like, I, I, I mean, Brandon, you, you played. Which manager do you want to play for after these? It, look, there's a little bit of like, it depends, only in the sense of like, at the end of it, I don't want to hear Mauricio Pochettino make up excuses, Right. What you want is him to be direct and say, this is what it is. Like when you hear this, I feel like he's protecting players, but the players know as players, we know what we did was not good enough because we lost to nothing. And it's not like referee got involved, gave them two goals and we were robbed. We were outplayed on the day. So when Dice goes, yeah, look, take the ball. I don't care. We found ways to win. We worked hard. To me, that just says, Daesh knew exactly what their game plan was. They executed on it. They don't care about vanity statistics. Whereas Potch is like, hey, no, we were better. We controlled this and that. It's like you controlled it without an end result. At the end of the day, all we want to see is Chelsea fans is 3 nothing, right? We've lived through the Mourinho era of one nothing. bring on Mikel. My man, we're good. Those trophies that came with that, they count. Very, They're very shiny. Happy. They're still shiny in the cabinet. You know? Very, very happy about that. So... I, like, I just, I think that this is the concern is like, you tell me what went wrong because right now we're dancing around it. Um, and this is the biggest problem right here is, is when Potts says, I think we are better, but in the end, we didn't get what we wanted. It's different than Newcastle or Manchester United, because I think I've seen Newcastle lose a few days ago, three, nothing. And I've seen Everton was much better than Newcastle, but today I think we're better than Everton. Where, what? What are you better at Everton? Because if you go minute one to minute 90, we were not because we lost 2-0. Everton have three matches in a row with clean sheets and dubs. We do not. Yeah, and and they're fighting. Like, look, they have extra motivation right now. Clearly, yeah. they're they, pissed they have, off, for yeah, sure. The, and, and, and look, sometimes that is the best thing that can galvanize a team, right, is to have a, a common mission and a common purpose. Like, you've heard that about teams and – all sorts of really high performing organizations that like a common purpose can take it an average group to an above average performance level. But th this is a hundred percent true. Like they are fighting for each other. They're fighting for a city, right? They're fighting for a group of, of supporters who, you know, I think are really scared about their future prospects based on, you know, the, the 10 point deduction that they've received. Now, of course, you know, that's in, all sorts of litigation and stuff right now, but they're pretending and rightfully so that they're down 10 points this year. 
If they did not have that 10 point deduction, they would be above us in the table and rightfully so. I mean, they, they would be 10th. They would yeah. be ahead of Fulham and one point behind West Ham. They've ground out results against Nottingham Forest, a team that we couldn't grind out of results against, right? Against Newcastle, where we got blasted off the pitch. At some point, facts are facts, man. Like, you know, I understand, you know, coach doesn't want to bring undue pressure upon himself. It's already a high-pressure environment at Chelsea. But we all have eyeballs. Like, we're not dumb. You're... Your performances are on display for the world to see every week, and you're trying to convince us that we were better even though we got beat 2 nil. Like, pretty doesn't equal better. We don't care. Again, this is results-based business. He knows that. We're a results-based fan base. I want the results. I, I really don't care about the patterns in the movement if nothing comes of it. Like, we were so disjointed today. It was frustrating. Uh, he was asked about conceding goals. Potch said, we need to try and improve these areas in the next transfer market if we Ooh. believe it's possible to improve. So then he goes on, more transfers in January because of the match. He said, quote, no, I think this is a lot to improve. We need to assess if the perception matches the reality to see if we're missing something in the middle. Maybe what? Maybe we need to improve our reality, end quote. I don't know, Dan. I really don't know what that means. He was asked about this game. He talked about the transfer market. They asked him, oh, so you need people because of this game? He goes, no, 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 of course not. I'm just not really sure if perception matches reality, which means I'm now upside down in an Inception movie. Well, I, I don't know if it's uh, Stranger Things upside down or the fifth layer in Inception or potentially uh, the wrong way in the side of Tenant. I don't know where we're at right now. And Pochettino did not do a good job, I think, of explaining exactly what we need. He, what he was trying to sum up, I think, is that like our expectation is to be at a certain level, to be maybe above where we are right now. The reality is we're not where we need to be, and we need to assess if the squad has the right build out of players to be able to deliver upon that. And I think you could make the case very fairly today that you don't have the right complement of players. And we know that some of the players that we've signed have been hits. I mean, I think there are a few that I think we were really, you know, happy with those type of players that have come into the side and are here now. I think there are a couple of players that the jury is still out on. I think there are a couple that you could, even though it's early, you could say, Hey, this is not the type of player who is going to push Chelsea forward. This is the type of player that if you signed them and everything else was really good, you would be able to give them 20, 30 minutes to let them grow over the course of the season. But you did that with a lot of players all at once. And so now I think Poch is looking around, wondering who is going to be the individual that he can point to and rally upon and count, count upon to will this team forward at moments. And I think when you look at this the 11 that were on the pitch today for the majority of it, Nick, I can understand why he's talking about the transfer market because I didn't, I was looking at it. Like, I don't know who is going to be the one person to will this forward. Maybe it's Cole Palmer because he's kind of shown shades of it occasionally, but there wasn't the one individual that I felt like, oh, okay. Yeah. They're going to be the person that will spark others to level up their game. I, I found this to be embarrassing, to be honest with you. I mean, the team has spent now, uh, honestly, we, we, we've debated this forever. The team has spent a ton of money on players, right? Whether those players were the right players or whatever, we're, we're going to soon find out, right? Very quickly. We're still missing a couple of key pieces coming back in Lavia and, and in Kunku, which we have not seen yet. We sent Andre Santos to a dumb loan at Nottingham Forest. More people is not the answer unless Reese James is, is, is out for the year, which, you know, obviously provides you a different sort of problem to solve. Um, and even then I think you probably are fine between Gusto and, and Kukurea to, to do enough there. Like this screamed, I don't have answers for you. And so I'm going to try and deflect and it made us look weak. And I thought that he was savvier than this. To, to be candid. I think every other team's fan base that's taking the piss out of us for spending a billion dollars and not having a team that can beat Everton is rightfully gleeful. And I think it makes us look bad. 
I was pissed. Like, honestly, I was pissed to see this. My, my, I'm aligning on a lot of that stuff in the sense of where I'm so frustrated with is, is really, I think like with the, the lack of the, the commitment and like the drive of these players. Well, he had the pre-match comment that was like the, you know, it's non-negotiable, right? The commitment is non-negotiable. But it, and that's where I get like, this is where I flex. Cause like to your point, Nick is like, these are excuses. And, and the transfer window is always a cop out for every manager, like right or wrong, you know, like either you're chasing down the, the league leaders and you just need that one player, right. To get there. Or it's like, well, you can't, you just do it with what you have. And the same thing, if you're struggling, it's like, no, 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 we definitely need more players. The one thing Chelsea don't need are more players, more like, players. <laughs> I mean, it's no. got to at least be one in one out, but it's like, then we got to talk about the project. But where I was coming from real quick was, is it, I don't know if Potch can't bench enough people on a weekly basis because of their lack of commitment and their lack of effort. I'm not sure what's going on. Four changes again today, coming off of red cards, coming off of injuries, but like the, the commitment is not there from a lot of these players. And I'm going to save that for the next section. But for me, I'm just really, really frustrated with a lot of this. And it seems like Potch is deflecting. Nick is a great word that you use on a lot of these things. And the transfer market was the last thing I wanted to hear after this losing streak. And um, that's where we kind of have to stand. Well, he did talk uh, about, go ahead. I'll, I'll, one second. Ollie did bring up and, and great friend of the pod, Ollie Glanville. He was like, I thought development was your thing. I thought development of young players was your thing. Now, of course, development takes time. Like that's a broad term that can, you know, that could be anything all, you know, all season. But like to to ask so bluntly after getting whipped for more players, just ah man, like what a bummer thing to hear. Like if I were the owners, I'd probably be pissed too. Yeah, they're a whole other they're a whole other subject. But mm -hmm. yeah. Most definitely. He was asked about Reese James, which, Dan, I'm just confused and more frustrated about this again because he confirmed it was his hamstring. He felt his hamstring. He doesn't know what's going on, but Reese asked to come off, so they made the call, and now we have to sit and wait on Reese James. Um, and again, like he said, not having one of the best right backs in the world is a problem, obviously. But can we get a solution or are we going to keep doing this dance every single week? Will he, won't he leave with a hamstring injury? Well, it's going to be really hard, I think, at this point, if it is. And we hope that this is not the case, right? We, we hope that it is not a serious injury and it was as precautionary as possible. But Reese is on 362 minutes plus the 20 some odd that he played. Let's just round it up, say 30, so 400 minutes. If he's out for a significant period of time, I think it is going to be extremely difficult for him to even match the total number of minutes in Premier League appearances he had last season, which he was out for a significant portion there too, of 24, or 12, 12, 44. So he started 14 matches. He's only started four matches this season out of the multitude that Chelsea have had a chance to play. Like, it is a long-standing issue i think there was a decision or a, a rumored decision that he opted not to take surgery and tried to kind of recover uh naturally in in this regard and again you you can't tell a player to do anything a certain way nick in terms of how they're going to approach their recovery they can only you give them the best advice possible on what a recovery timeline like what might look like but uh, i think we are in significant jeopardy right now unfortunately of reese james not being available for an extended period and uh that that is a bad thing for him it's a bad thing for for chelsea and pochettino it's a bad thing for the other players because malagusto is only just now coming back uh kind of at the end of his recovery or injury recovery too he has a he has a knee injury that dates back to last year you know and it's like okay so kind of walking wounded there at that position and and we know from preseason that these fullback positions are the most high strain positions in our team. They, they are being asked to do a ton, right? That's part of the tactical setup that Pot just put out there is a high press, get up and down the field, be super fit. You know, fitness was the key word in preseason, right? We have to be the most fit team, all this bullshit. And it's been nothing but a calamity of injuries. This one is particularly frustrating because he has been hurt. He should have had the surgery 
a long time ago. I know that's easy to say from my lofty perch here in Kansas City, but like he's jeopardizing his own career. Like he was once the best right back in the world. Now he's a guy who who can't play. Like that that is a that's a significant drop off to me. And I and you know, we're not winning anything this year. Get it done. Get get a more natural permanent fix for whatever is ailing him. We've seen other players go through this. Chilwell's gone through it. Like get get a get a fix in there. Whatever the hell it is. I'm not a medical expert, but like rumored surgeries be damned. Like we need this guy to play and play consistently. Has he played five matches this year? Six maybe. It, look, he's at like twenty percent of total minutes. You know, like. Come on. That's your it captain, is. you know? Oh, absolutely. And unfortunately, he's not uh, alone uh, on that. Sanchez got subbed off. Apparently, Cucurella was injured, too. He twisted his yep. ankle and asked to become a subbed off. Sanchez asked to be subbed off as well. Said, suffered a problem versus Manchester United. Felt something in the second half. Hope it's not a big issue. We're dealing with these situations, and it's too much. Like, this kind of opens up a broader topic, which... We need to figure it out, but like, who's making the decision to quote unquote and risk players if they have a knock? If Reese James has to go off in the 26, 27 minute, that was a bad decision. Did they not have the right data? Did they not have the right communication? Did the medical team not give clear, like, what could happen if? And now we're here with Sanchez. We don't know if it's bad or not, but if he's saying he's the one who made the call based on these quotes, Nick, to come off, that's problematic when a, because you know players want to play. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you have a, a knee injury, kicking the ball really far away isn't a great way to, to live, you know? Like, I, it, it would seem just counterproductive and, and counterintuitive to manage a team this way. Uh, you know, it's why we were screaming out for Georgi Pet- Petrovic uh, to, to play in the Carabao Cup games. You know, he had to come in just from the cold today in the whatever minute cares, doesn't even matter. And and he gives up another goal that was, and again, terrible set piece defending once again. Uh, probably not his his total fault, but it was a weak punch and, and all that sort of stuff. Like, you're putting no one in a position to succeed. Colwell has to come in. In the 22nd, 27th minute, whatever it was, and play left back again because we can't, we we won't play the available left back that we have in the left back position. We have to we have to throw Kukurea over to right back, and we're and at the same time, and I think this is where I'm like losing it a little bit on Poch is you're not changing your game plan. You're playing as if Cole Will and Disasi are 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 uh, fullbacks. Like they're they're capable of doing the things that Reese James and Ben Chilwell are capable of doing, and it's just nonsense. Like bunker down, man. Play on the counterattack. There's no shame in that. Like, why are you why are you asking these guys to do jobs that they are clearly not like super suited to do, and expecting different results? It's like insanity to me. I don't I don't get it. insane in the membrane uh look the last one from Pacha's mentality i said is it an issue at the front of the back says so everything it's not to, so easy to say it's one it's holistic what do you need to change he said little by little change the mentality the expectation was massive as chelsea the expectation is always win the premier league and the reality sometimes that the team is still fighting for different circumstance but sometimes it's a good reality check we need to fight we need to be there we need to win more dan um again i'm gonna hold some comments back at this point but based on what he said essentially he's not going to blame anyone maybe resetting expectations a little bit trying to hedge against the expectations which we know are massive and um that is problematic at this point in time again just based on everything else we we kind of said leading up to this last one it's good to say and acknowledge that you know we need to be fighting harder we need to be pushing and that it's on him to push the players and the players to push themselves but the outcome has not changed and we've gone backwards from the team that had some really good results uh, right before the international break and so 
it is now incumbent upon him to showcase over the next one to two matches, which you would argue are going to be winnable for Chelsea. But again, I, I arguing that maybe feels like a, a unsafe place to be at the moment. The Ralph Wiggum, I'm in danger moment if I say that, because it's Sheffield United who you should beat. It is Newcastle in a cup final, which if you're Not looking for final, round to Europe, quarter, quarter, quarter final. final, yeah, it's going to feel like a cup final. It might be the closest <laughs> we get to something feeling like a cup final for quite Probably. some time. So yeah. you should treat it like one. Um, because if you're looking for a way back into Europe, uh, winning the Carabao Cup or you know, might have to be the way that you do it. So this would be, you know, I, I think two must win games. And, and again, you've got three more after that rounding out the, the this month against Palace, Wolves and Luton. Uh, a Luton side that uh, seemingly has found a way to punch up too, which has uh, been uh, quite fun to watch as a, a neutral viewer of them, but will not be fun to watch if they carry that form forward into the end of the month. So uh, again, yes, it's great to say it. Now it's it, it's always been the time to show it, and we have to consistently show that we are capable of willing each other forward and not the supporters who, again, have made some pretty terrible way trips this season to see some pretty horrific results and are consistently still being loud and being vocal. And I think a credit to them because they're showing up even if the team uh, doesn't show up at the same level every time, Nick. The tip from the from the Raleigh-Durham Blues w went to both United and Everton. Th this was her trip this year. Ima imagine that. Imagine seeing that bullshit twice. Like The mentality thing is a, is a double-edged sword, though, Brandon. It, it gets better when you start winning, but it requires it to start winning <laughs> right like these are it's a really hard thing and it's why you know having you know guys on this ever you know the everton team that we that we played against today abdullah decor is a monster like that dude takes no prisoners he's really 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 good he's been the best player on that team for four seasons and he knows it like he is not screwing around like there are some hard people on that team you know say what you want about pickford who is annoying as all hell but I will. The dude has some character to him, like it, it, it's it, it's a double edged sword to me. I don't I don't want to hear about mentality anymore because it's it's just annoying. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna take our last ad break when we get back. Uh, again, more of the headlines and what we can do between here until the first of January. So thank you to the sponsors, and we'll be right back. Uh, real quick, we do have more episodes coming this week. Obviously, uh, Blue Royalty's back with the Arsenal Review. See how that goes. Tough weekend for Chelsea. Uh, we've got the Matt Law special coming back at you. Then, obviously, Dan and Sam will do the Sheffield match preview as well as another Blue Royalty. So, so make sure you're subbed on both feeds. Lots coming at you. All right. Headlines from around, uh, you know, I guess, I don't know, the world. Kind of looks like we've got a nice little spread here. Uh, it says Everton claim crucial win over Chelsea to pile pressure on Mauricio Pochettino. And then CBS Sports says Mauricio Pochettino's Chelsea remains stuck in neutral and underwhelming loss at Everton. Dan, I will say, ever since the ban, Everton are in pretty good form. I think they're like 7 1 and 1. Uh, like I said, three wins on the trot with three clean sheets in a row. So they're, they're obviously in a little bit of form. We're not. But, anyways, those are the first two. Nick said it right earlier that the us against the world type of mentality that Everton are embodying right now, the absolute F you middle finger that they want to give to the Premier League is some of the best type of fuel that you can put in the tank for a side, particularly a side that plays the way that Dyche likes to play, which is strong commitment, 90 minutes, grueling it out, not necessarily the sexiest football in the world. Like it is absolutely, it is definition and textbook like Dice could not have asked for a better thing actually to happen to his side unfortunately <laughs> like a points deduction has actually caused his team I think to play better than uh than they ever would have possibly played uh and are showing up for their supporters so I mean I think these are fair assessments so, I mean just in terms of like the headlines like yes there is now more pressure on Pochettino and Chelsea. Yes, it is a crucial win for Everton. Yes, we still remain in neutral. And I think actually we, we'd argue maybe that there's been a little bit of regression or continued regression. So, I mean, I actually thought the headlines were going to be worse, Nick. <laughs> yeah, so did I, to, to be to be candid. I mean, we're in 12th place at this point in the season. I, we're, we're in 12th place. And, and the frustrating part of this is these last two games in particular – 
right? Say what you want about the Newcastle result, which was, you know, felt like it was always going to happen. Um, you beat Brighton. You have a terrible Manchester United team that gets buried by Bournemouth at the week or at the weekend um, in hilarious fashion. And, uh, you know, Newcastle loses again, uh, you know, Brighton draws like the results kind of fall in your favor ahead of you and you can't do fuck all about it. <laughs> you can't win. You can't get out of 10th place. In fact, you're going to drop two spots because you can't win. Like I it's all of this is fair. Whatever anyone writes this week is fair. This team is not good enough. They are not good enough. They're not winning enough. And 39 points this calendar year out of 39 matches played is exactly where we should be. Like we're, we're exactly where the results would say we are. I, I'm not one to, to fight these. I think so far we're pretty, we're pretty calm in the middle on some of these. I would say, as you look at talk sport, who says Pochettino under mounting pressure after another drab defeat as Dobbin yada, yada goes on to get the, his, his first goal. Um, it's and then I see Alan Pardew talking on on Talk Sport. I do have a little bit of an issue that Pardew decided to get out of management, maybe because he wasn't good enough. And I just talks about other people not being good at management. Like <laughs> I do take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. Um, but as Ollie just tweeted again, like Goodison Park is a bit of a bogey site for us, which is no excuse. And we always give some kid a wonder goal. It wasn't even that much of a wonder goal, but like. Our defensive shape is so horrific at that point. Um, I just find a lot of frustration here. But again, Dan, I guess we've doubled down on the pressure on Pochettino mounting. What we don't know is what are the expectations for this team, for this project, for the manager. And I think that's where I'm at is like, should I be, are, are we comparing this team to Nick, as you said, on Antonio Conte? We talk about bringing Jose Mourinho back. Are we comparing this squad of players to them when they are nowhere near it, right? Like, the the sporting directors built this young team on purpose with a plan, and now the kids aren't getting it done, and now we don't know who to blame. And these are the types of headlines I think that you get, and is and where I really saw Twitter and Discord go is, do you blame the coach? Do you play, blame the players? Do you blame the owners or whatever it is? But like, this is where you get that headline is we don't know if this is, I don't know what it, where's the project, right? Where do we draw the line for Potch? I think it's so blurred and gray right now that it's, it's no one knows. And so everyone's just mad at everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think Matt put out a, an article a couple of days ago saying the owners need to speak up. They need to be heard. They need to bring the fans uh, behind the rope, uh, which was uh, a, a nod to the annual luncheon, apparently. Um, because, yeah, I mean, we need to understand what expectations are. Um, you know, we start off every season with expectations are that we are challenging, right? Whether it be for league title, cups, whatever we're in, the Chelsea are, are serial winners. We, we, we tell ourselves that every year. We're not going to win shit this year. That's very obvious. Um and I think Dan, where I'm most concerned right now, like the players have been bought and they're on huge contracts. There's nothing you can do about that now, right? The sporting directors could be replaced, could not be replaced. It won't make fuck all difference uh, for the next match, right? Like that part of the job is done until January. So I'm going to focus on Potch and I think, would have thought that by December 10th that we would have seen some significant progress in the way that we've played this year. And it still feels very chaotic. I mean, not that it's a massive compliment. I still think we are playing better football than the majority of what we played last season. So at least like season over season improvement. And I know it doesn't always feel that way. And you might disagree with that comment, but the fact is like, we're still on pace to score more goals than we did last season. <laughs> like that is a, a positive, like we are creating more chances, even if we're not finishing and that, like that is a positive, like there are, you know, some results against top six sides where we have shown up and that is a positive. And so like, there are things where we've 
gone forward, but there's also things where we regressed. And, and I think the question around like, well, what do you do now? How much of it's on Poch? How much of it's on the ownership? Like, w- would not be a bad thing for the ownership to say like, hey, like th- we're, I mean, I think they would say, hey, we're not happy with where we are right now. Like our ambition, I think is to be in Europe. There was the conversation, I think back in October, around like this whole idea about like identifying the the hundred point team or whatever and trying to get to a hundred points. Like, are we looking at it over consecutive seasons? Because like that's the only <laughs> where we get hundred points in the, Bro, we got in the very near points. future. <laughs> um and and I mean we gotta poke fun because otherwise like I think it just becomes a little bit of a doom spiral. But my question would be is are we identifying like a one to two signings? If you are looking at like, hey, we want to try to address this in January. Like, yes, you need to go sign one or two players who are going to impact. I think they have to deviate from the norm of what we signed, which is you know, le- less maybe talented, less proven, buying the potential longer contract. I think maybe you revert to some things that have worked before, which is like, hey, is it someone who's Premier League proven? Is it someone who has a history of scoring goals? It's someone who could be more combative. It's someone who can add value to the crosses that we whip in or the set pieces that we're into. Like, we, we are not dominant enough in in those areas like we are a weak team on set pieces both in how we concede and how we don't score off of them and i think the the major question is like are are the people who are currently identifying the players that chelsea are going out to sign the right individuals to to do that moving forward i think that's where the ownership and the board would have to look at like look here's a track record of everybody we've brought in Here's a track record of, of here's where they're at. Like, are they at the level and they're they're kind of contributing as we expected? Are they above? Are they performing above where we got? Which is like very, very few of the players we've signed recently. Or are they well below the expectation? And again, some of that might be injury related. Some of that might be system related. But like, they're still just not at where we need to be. Like, that would be a talent evaluation issue and I think Brandon, at that point, as someone who also manages or has managed people, like that would be on you, right? Like if you were the person, your boss comes to you and says, hey, like your team is screwing up. You continue to hire people that don't deliver. Like, is it not? Yeah, I mean, that to me, you feel more about like the director type of conversation than necessarily the manager conversation. But I, I think, it, you know, that's just where I'm at. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. Right, if I have a lot of trust in the current setup, also because this is what got us here. Like, let's just be honest, right? We've all had to change a plan that didn't work and uh, try to find a new solution. I just, I am to the to like a point where I would like to think Sheffield United next week is the perfect timing. Maybe some would even call it a gift. At this point, I'm not. I'm not calling anything a gift. I'm not calling anything a blessing. I think someone asked, like, oh, I think it was uh, Chelsea HQ tweeted, like, how confident are you going into this game today? I said, confidence is earned. It's built. I go, we have no confidence. I hope the team wins. I hope we go out there and do something good. But we did not. And so I can't even look at Sheffield, who got smashed up by Burnley, who are also terrible. But it also is well, they, like the- they won this weekend, by the way, like Wilder is back and has them playing just Love like it. Sean Dyche's Everton, like Love it. because, of course, that's when we're going to play him. But yeah, you're right. Confidence is earned. And if you don't think they're going to punch us in the face next weekend, you don't even have an idea of what's going to happen. That's what they can do. They're not more skilled than we are. They're not more talented than we are. But are they going to come punch us in the face and see if we react? You bet your ass. And right now my confidence is that we're going to fold and that is not good i mean look it's it's like a pass fail test for the players at this point i mean i saw the chelsea fc account put something out about like hey supporters we heard you like we appreciate you <laughs> time is ticking we know how this goes right early in the season matt law we we're talking about when will the fans sing Potch's name we are not there right but man we're not singing any of these players' names either. You know, it is it is broken top to bottom. So I tweeted, you guys got six days. Sporting directors, potch staff, players, support staff. You got six days to figure this out. And um, we'll see what happens. But I, I'm getting quite tired of the um of the 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 
just the lack of results and the naivety about going about these as if like we have a right Can to Can we revisit the uh the Smokey the Bear situation? Um you know, we we did go through a little bit of a chart in the last pod <laughs> talking about where our level of concern was and uh, I believe both of you were high uh which was yellow in the middle. Would you like to reassess? Like I'm still in the very high with I think I made the comment maybe trending to the extreme. Are you are you migrating up a little bit on the I, the chart? I, I need to see Nkunku. I need to see Lavia. I am I I again I I think Pacha's comments probably put me closer to there than I was on Wednesday, even though the performance was slightly better today than it was on Wednesday. But I, I need to see the superstar signing play for Chelsea football club. If he's a bust, then it's all, it's all high red territory. But like, I have a feeling that adding a experienced, you know, we're clamoring for experience here, adding experienced goal scorer who has a swagger about him, as we saw in preseason to this team could be the right tonic or at least part of a solution. And I'm not, I'm not willing to just throw this in the trash right now, but it is, it's bleak right now. And I, I just don't feel good about Sheffield at all. I just feel like they're going to, they're going to do exact. If they, if they don't do exactly what Everton just did to us, they're nuts. <laughs> I mean, they're really crazy. Correct. I look, I'm definitely taking a step up just because I don't see, we saw regression again. And that's that's a concern. I even I said before the game, Dan, I was like, look, we got a bench, right? I get the rotation, maybe send a message, but hey, we've got a good lineup. We got firepower on the bench. We can change this if we need, no problem. Go down the goal. I'm like, all right, that sucks. But again, we can bring in Raz, you can bring in Jackson, you can bring in Matson, you know, kind of whoever. Nothing. Right? Like, even that. We had a good spell towards the end when Everton just sat back and absorbed, but it's like that wasn't enough to the point where even conceded again after making those changes. So um, I, I, I am definitely getting to the point where I, I'm losing faith in these players that they are able to do what we as Chelsea fans would want them to do. And so I, I really look at the sporting directors and this project they were so proud of at the beginning of the season. I don't think you nailed it. So we'll, we'll have to see how it continues. All right, no Dan in the match, because surprise. Uh, but we did uh, touch on the other fixtures and some of the results around the table. You know, this would have been a great weekend to at least draw. We could have hidden behind a draw, Dan. You know, with some oh, of yeah. the other results that happened, but no, we we didn't. We we didn't. Well, yeah, I mean, it ended with Tottenham absolutely blasting a Newcastle side, which again is what we should have done. <laughs> But Newcastle losing 4-1 to Tottenham City uh, after initially going down to Luton, come back and went 2-1. Fulham with Willian absolutely pummeling West Ham 5 to nothing. We obviously were 2 nothing to Everton. Aston Villa, another huge result to stacking them. I think they absolutely are in the running. Uh, I mean, they are a top three team at the moment, but I think they're absolutely in the running to go out and win the league this season, which is crazy. Uh, one nothing win over Arsenal. It was a 1-1 draw, Wolves and Forest. Sheffield, as Nick mentioned, beat Bournemouth one nothing Again, it was not just a Sheffield beating another Brent, relegation Brentford. level side. They, beat, they Brentford. beat Brentford because Bournemouth hilariously smacked yes. United. Whooped them. Uh, still. Uh, a, a good testament to the quality of win, though, that Sheffield was getting because the Brentford side has generally been a good side this season, though they have been a little out of form. And uh, Bournemouth, 3 nothing over United. Again, what we should have done, but we didn't do. Burnley and Brighton tied one apiece, and then Liverpool beat Crystal Palace 2-1. to one. So, yeah, that was that was the weekend. Look, again, Nick, so many distractions, so many other things that were looking good for us, and then we came out and obviously laid our eggs. So it's not going to be pretty, uh, especially as we continue to look to the table. I mean, we're down, right? We're, we're in 12th. We are firmly in the bottom half of the table to the point where we're 10 points off of the drop. Thank God the worst of the worst teams are down there. But as you pointed out, Sheffield getting their first victory. Um, and we are, let's see, math here, 18 points off of the top. 
And even for Conference League, for shits and giggles, we're seven points away from that. Mind the gap. That gap keeps getting bigger. It's much harder to claw it back. But I'm not even worried about Europe right now. I'm worried about this team playing some semblance of football that we can get behind and that we can be proud of and that there is a clear pathway for improvement this season because without that there is no result that matters i mean like it that's kind of where we are now like we're in that territory where europe's kind of a distant dream maybe if results pick up you get back in the conversation but we need to be focused not on europe not on getting into top four i mean i feel like jim mora playoffs talking about playoffs like no, like you need to focus on beating fucking Sheffield United, the bottom table team. They are on eight points and have a minus 184 goal differential. If you don't beat Sheffield United, oof, I mean, the, the fire, the fire is going to burn bright. Um, and, and honestly, rightfully so. Um, like this is, this is no joke, like s- typically halfway through the season, like where teams kind of figure out who they are. You don't want it to go the other way. No doubt about it. All right. Well, look, part of the reason we need to win is because we can't keep doing these different style pods. Like we need a result to react <laughs> to. We can't keep reformatting this every single week, but Hope you liked it. Again, just trying to break down a lot of the what's going on. How are people looking at this? Uh, you know, who's got their head screwed on straight and who's losing it right now? Because look, let's be honest. A lot of us are as fans. This is so frustrating pulling the hair out. Um, but we're going to be back. Like I said, a lot of content this week. Uh, Matt Law's big. So if you want, get in our Discord. Uh, get joined up there. Drop your question in the questions channel. We'll be using those for Matt as well as always. Uh, And then we got the preview pod with Dan, Sam, and all that blue royalty uh, just content coming at you as well. So that's going to wrap us. Until next time, Chelsea fans, you know what to do. Keep the blue flag flying high.